Hello and welcome to the how-to guide for partitioning using Windows Vista or Windows 7. Using partitions gives you some advantages. First, you can use a partition to separate your data from the operating system. And secondly, you can create a blank partition to install another operating system if you want to set up a dual boot. Warning! Before trying any of these methods, make sure all of your data is backed up. This is always a great idea when working with partitions. If you have Windows XP or a lower version of Windows XP, creating partitions is a bit more of a challenge for you. For Windows XP to repartition with Windows, you have to use your Windows install disk and reinstall the operating system. It is only at the start of the Windows install that you can create new partitions. As one can imagine, this is a very long process and thankfully there is an easier way at hand. Fortunately, for the Windows XP users, you do have another option. I'm not going to show this method, but the concepts are very similar. You can use a live Linux CD called gparted. Go to this site and download the ISO image. Burn to a CD and boot from the CD to enter the partition manager. You won't have to reinstall the operating system. Again, back up all data in case the partition goes awry. If you really wanted, you can buy third-party software that does the same as gparted, but this costs money. Uh, a quick application that comes to mind is called Partition Magic. For the Vista and Windows 7 users, you are in luck. Windows has finally included a built-in disk manager that won't require a reformat for partitioning. So let's get started. Currently, I'm running Windows 7 Evaluation Copy. These steps should be the same for the Vista users. Final warning, make sure all your data is backed up. First, we need to bring up the Run command. Hit your Windows plus the R letter on your keyboard at the same time. Now we're going to type in D-I-S-K-M-G-M-T dot M-S-C and click enter. This will bring up the disk management application. If you have multiple drives or if you've already partitioned before you will see all available drives. Most users will have just the C drive. So this may be the drive you want to make room from. I, however, for this demonstration, am going to use this drive, the V drive. So what we're going to do next is we're going to right click on the volume you want to make room from. Again, uh, you may be using the C drive, but for my demonstration I want to use the V drive. So right click, click shrink volume. Total size before the sh shrink in megabytes. This is actually how big your drive is. So I'm just going to say it's uh, 30,000 megabytes. For my purposes, I just want to split my drive in half. So enter the amount of space to shrink in megabytes. So for me, that's just going to be 15,000. Click shrink. And you can see we have the V drive, which was uh, 30 gigs, is now uh, split in half. So approximately 15 gigs here and approximately 15 gigs in the unallocated space. Next, we need to right-click on the uh, unallocated space. This is currently not recognized by the operating system as a drive. Um, if you wanted to install a Linux operating system, you can probably just leave this blank alone, and then in the disk partition, when you actually install the operating system, this will reformat this uh, space here into uh, a format that the operating system can understand. But for our purposes, if we want to create a different drive to store data, I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to right click and we are going to say new simple volume. So here, uh, if you wanted to leave more allocate, unallocated space, uh, we could do that. Uh, however, for my purposes, I just want to use the maximum unallocated space. So I'm just going to leave this as the default and then we're going to click Next. Here we need to assign it a letter. Um, for my data, I like the letter D because that's easy to remember. You can name the letter whatever you want. Uh, for this example, um, let's say we use uh, M. So we're going to click Next. Formatting the drive with the following settings. Okay, this depends on what you want to do. Here we have NTFS or FAT32. In general, NTFS is the Windows standard. However, not all operating systems can read and write to it. Linux can now read write to NTFS. Uh, I'm not sure about OS X. 
FAT32, you might have more luck re reading and writing to many more operating systems if you want to use this to access your data across multiple operating systems. But with FAT32, the maximum file size uh, can only be 4 gigabytes for that particular file. And let's face it, if you're doing video, you could easily be bigger than that for a single file. Uh, since uh, Linux can now uh, read, write NTFS, this may not be as important. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, NTFS for this example. Um, also, I should mention too, with FAT32, the bigger your volume becomes, the slower and more inefficient accessing your data may also become. So we're just going to use NTFS. Click Next, Finished, and it's formatting, and we're done. If in the future you want to change drive letters, uh, this is pretty easy to do. Uh, again, um, you're going to be in Disk Management Application. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the uh, volume that you want to change the drive letter to. Make sure you are assigning it a letter that will not be used uh, and one that you have not picked before. So for example, my USB, whenever it plugs in, uh, is always the L drive. Therefore, I do not want to assign my new volume the L drive. Even if I don't have my USB plugged in, it may show up on the list. But when I plug in my USB, it will cause great conflict. So the moral of this is just make sure you pick a drive letter that you've never ever used before. But you simply right click and we are going to say change drive letter and paths. And then you're going to click change. And then we're going to assign it a new letter. Um, I, for this example, maybe I will use O. Click OK. So this gives the warning that I just described. Some programs that rely on drive letters may not run correctly. Do you want to continue? Yes. Okay, so now, as you can see, it was the M drive, and now it became the O drive. Let's check out our new drive. Go to My Computer, and now we see in our list all of our disks. Here we have the C drive, which is uh, where all of our Windows files are located. I already had a data drive before, and then here's our new uh, O volume and our V volume. So um, if we want, we can rename this volume to something more meaningful instead of new volume. Uh, simply right click on the volume you wish to change the name to, and we are going to say rename. This will be highlighted, and we could call it something meaningful. If you want to store documents here, we could just call it documents. <clears throat> So here I need to give permission to my computer to change this, that's fine. So now our new volume is called Documents. And you can see if I click on it, this folder is empty. Um, and you can set up your data however you want, if you want to um, uh, take it away f or take it out of the operating system. For example, this is just a quick peek at what I've done. I have permanent files, and in my permanent files I have my music. Um, and this is the way that I've decided to keep all of my files outside the operating system. So that is it. We now have a new blank drive formatted as NTFS. This can be a great place to store your data away from the operating system. You can also install a Linux operating system to this partition. I hope you've enjoyed this how-to video and thanks for watching.